Just lay out for us then, what are we going to hear from Keir Starmer a little bit later on today? He says, I'm going to keep the UK safe. This is a marked sort of change, a gear change from the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah, I think you can probably expect to see Keir Starmer standing in front of uh, several Union Jack, uh, Union Jack flags um, when he makes his appearance up in, the, uh, up, up in Barrow uh, later today. But I think one thing he wants to try and get across is the fact that Labour is a change party, is a change party from when Jeremy Corbyn uh, was leader just, uh, just four years ago. Um, he's going to make some commitments and talk about how uh, the, the building of any, uh, any, any of those submarines will be done in Barrow, so it'll be homegrown. It'll, it'll make sure that uh, those submarines are, are built in, uh, in Barrow. Um, he will make a commitment to keep the um, continuous sat seat uh, deterrent. So that's one thing that he's, uh, he's going to pledge um, also, and all upgrades that are needed for, um, for our nuclear deterrent um, will, will, will also be adhered to. So it's a real sort of step change um, to what we've seen in the last few years. And I think it's just trying to get that key message across to voters um, that the country's security is safe in his hands. I mean, just, just in terms of that, if we can bring you in, James, here, the first Labour leader in 30 years to pledge to something like this, for a defence very much mm. on the front foot. Also, as Ryan was just saying there, actually, um, not, not only all of the things that Ryan mentioned, but also commitment to AUKUS. So, yes. so that's unusual as well for a, a Labour, potentially a Labour Prime Minister. Yeah, so this is the... AUKUS is this defence agreement that was agreed when Boris Johnson was Prime Minister between the US and Australia and the UK, hence why you get AUKUS when you put the letter together. But yeah, you know, it's Keir Starmer trying to show that Labour can be trusted with national security because we know historically the Conservatives tend to poll better with voters on the economy, on crime, on national security. And we've seen in recent years Labour now overturning the Tory lead on the economy. More voters say currently, if you read the polls, they trust Keir Starmer than Rishi Sunak with the nation's finances. That's something they've, they've put a lot of effort into. Ditto with crime as well. And now they're trying to address national security because, you know, as, as Ryan pointed out, back under Jeremy Corbyn, Labour's position on the nuclear deterrent was a real sore point. And so Keir Starmer, as he has done throughout his leadership, is trying to say, look, I'm a different leader. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Ryan, I think that the challenge for the electorate, for you, me, voters, if you're looking now at Labour Party policy, you're thinking this is creeping much closer to, to Conservative policy, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what uh, Labour are pledging this morning. They say that there'll be a, a commitment to reach 2.5% of uh, GDP spending on defence when the uh, conditions um, allow. Well, that's quite similar to where the government are. Mm. The government currently spend just shy of 2.3% um, um, on, uh, on, on defence spending. And they have talked about how they would like to get the, the money up. And there's even Grant Shapps, the Defence Secretary, who's... Uh, rattling the tin, going towards the, tre uh, you know, walking towards the Treasury saying he's 3%. So, you know, th there is a commitment or there is a there is a expectation that uh, the government um, will spend more money on defence uh, when, when conditions allow. And it's kind of roughly in the same place as where, as where Labour are. But I think the point of, of Labour, they're just trying to get in the same position of the, of the Conservatives. If they can neutralise issues such as defence, they feel they're in a good place. So, so that's quite interesting, James. So you've got Labour moving into Conservative ground. Meanwhile, Conservatives moving into Labour ground. Then you've got other parties taking mm. what is traditionally Conservative ground. So the electorate is left with quite a bewildering choice of how to vote. It's difficult. I mean, defence doesn't tend to be a party political issue. We don't tend to see voters going to the ballot box and actually thinking, you know what, the, the big issue for me is defence spending. So it's not necessarily a massive issue if the two parties have an overlap there. But it does play into this wider narrative, you're right, David, that there isn't necessarily that much distinguishing Labour from the Conservatives these days. No, can I just also ask you about Nick Fletcher as well, the Conservative MP yes. for Doncaster, of course. And, and this is about Lee Anderson, and the fact mm. is that Lee Anderson said he wouldn't campaign against his mate. Now, that is a very unusual position. In fact, Nick Fletcher went further and said Lee Anderson has been his constituency's greatest champion and he hoped voters appreciate what he's done for his hometown and his country at the next election. Essentially, you've got a Conservative MP endorsing a Reform UK MP. Eyebrows have been raised. Can That's you just an understatement. Take a step back and explain yes. for us what's so, happened. So, traditionally, 
If you are a member of any party, and certainly if you're an elected representative, you have to endorse the candidates from within your own party. And Nick Fletcher, who's a Conservative MP, has appeared to implicitly endorse Lee Anderson, who, of course, up until recently was a Conservative MP, has now defected to reform. Now, for example, when Alastair Campbell, former Labour advisor, admitted in 2019 he had voted for the Liberal Democrats in the European elections, he got kicked out of the mm. party. He wasn't even an elected representative. So there are question marks now over, well, hang on a minute, Nick Fletcher, you've essentially endorsed someone from another party. He has somewhat stepped back from that, mm. but a lot of people are saying, look, if Rishi Sunak was in a stronger position, he might actually be suspending the whip from Nick Fletcher. Well, should we talk about something that does strengthen the Conservatives' position? A little bit of breaking news for you. The UK economy grew by 0.1% in February. That's just out from the Office for National Statistics. And, Ryan, uh, the Prime Minister will be a little bit heartened by that. Presumably, they're thinking, we just need to hold out for things like the economy to improve, inflation to come down, which means we've got some kind of narrative to pitch to the public. I, I think that's exactly right. And I think that, that we've heard lots of uh, calls for... Uh, for Rishi Sunak to hold that general election in, in, in May, June. I just don't think that's going to happen mm. um, while his strongest card, some, uh, many would see as, as the economy, um, you have the, the, the backdrop of um, the UK in a, in a technical recession because whether it's technical or not, it's still a recession. So I think he'd like to move out of, uh, out of that sort of space towards the, the middle of the year. There is some speculation whether there will or will not be interest rate cuts towards the summer. But I think if the if the country and many in the public feel they have a maybe a little bit more money in their pocket, it might be a, that might be a better time to actually um, ask the uh, ask the country to go and vote for you. But I think that, that there'll be well will be welcome news. And you look at the the five pledges that he made back in January last year. Three of them were based on the economy. So uh, he'll be seeing that as good news this morning. And of course, he wants to stop the boats. We also saw the response to the hospital waiting times, which as we know, still aren't good enough. But Rishi Sunak, obviously, is trying to hang on as long as possible, hoping for some good news. Does that change when that election date is, do you think? I don't think so. I think the election date has always been pencilled in for October, November uh, this year. I don't think... I can, the people I speak to in Downing Street, they've not been swayed off course by anything over the past... Uh, a uh, few weeks or months. Um, I think you want to see the, they'll want to see that the uh, the backdrop of the economy is doing better. Perhaps those waiting lists have come down and maybe you'd have a flight um, going off to Rwanda. So I think all those things brought together, they may have a story to tell, but still looking at those yeah. polls, they're 20 odd points behind. And, yeah. and that's why Labour feel like they've got more wiggle room to, as we were talking about earlier, potentially put forward policies that might alienate their core support. Very quickly on NHS mm -hmm. waiting list, James, we had statistics out yesterday that the, the government were very excited about. Waiting lists have come down again, but they are still, we have to say, um, higher than when Rishi Sunak initially yeah. promised to bring them down in the first place. To be honest, it's quite similar to the situation with the growth figures we've just had. Yeah. Yes, things are moving mm -hmm. in the right direction. 0.1% growth. Exactly, February. very slowly, and not in a way that most people will actually notice. Most people don't feel much better off than they did a few years ago. Mm -hmm. If anything, still they feel worse off mm -hmm. than they did a few years ago. Same thing with waiting lists. Yes, OK, they might be moving in the right direction, but they're still too high and people notice that when they need them. And, and absolutely right. And, of course, people can't see a doctor and that is what people will be feeling at home. Of course, the junior doctor strikes rumble on as well. That's cost £3 billion and I don't see any closure to this anytime soon. And that is a political problem for him. Oh, it's a huge political problem because, remember, growing the economy and reducing waiting lists were two of his big five pledges, stop the boats, reducing debt. He hasn't made much progress. I think progress we do quite a good job of, of reminding everyone what those pledges were. <laughs>